I'm Laura. I am a senior in the BXA program at the school, so that's, I mean, both art and English. I'm sort of a horror buff. Um, I, I specialize in studying gothic literature, the uncanny, things that creep people out. Um, are things that I'm particularly interested in, as well as the study of subculture, which also feeds into game culture. And I definitely have an interest in games that is similar to my interest from any other kinds of media. I am not really tech savvy, and actually I was never allowed to play video games as a kid. Uh, my name is Dave, computer science senior. I play games, I make games. They're a lot of fun. They're kind of a pain to make, but that's more fun. So I start off just playing video games, and at some point, the amount of agency I have over my characters was no longer satisfying to me. And so I decided it was better for me to make my own games. I've known a lot about the power of amnesia, but I've never got to experience it myself. I've never actually played amnesia myself, but I've seen enough playthroughs that it, again, it does look kind of beautiful and fascinating. I think it's getting harder and harder to deny as we watch the medium evolve that video games are art. They've become interactive in ways that make the viewer or a player question things about perhaps their reality, the nature of art, um, psychology, philosophy in some cases. So I think they do a lot of the jobs that art is meant to do. They're like films, but you take control of your characters. And if films are art, then so are games. But Amnesia is a first-person thriller horror game um, in which you are someone trapped in a big scary castle house thing. and you don't have any sort of weaponry or defense mechanism, so it's this interesting sort of horror where you have to hide from whatever is pursuing you. I'm expecting to embarrass myself because I don't play games, so I'm probably gonna just fumble uh, with controls and stuff a lot, but I'll try and uh, forge past that. The game's obviously trying to freak me out, so I'm gonna try to fight that. Walk the other way, walk the other way. Oh. Don't. It's trying to trick you. But I'm curious. Oh, no. No, you're not. My name is... is... I am Daniel. I like the change from my name is to I am. Because I'm a lit nerd. <laughs> it becomes less fact and more internal identity. Yeah, this is exactly like when I wake up in the morning. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Bear with me. I'm challenged. There we go. Hey, oh, I'm man. I am what now a destroyer. Force of destruction. Well, you just wake up in the morning and like, destroy things. <laughs> okay. You got it. Uh, Dude, Daniel was like asthma. <laughs> oh my gosh, Daniel. Suck it up. Is this like a dead care bear or something? Like, what leaves that kind of. I thought it was Pepto Abysmal. Unicorn blood can sustain me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, get the loot. This is so exciting. We have like 20 more? tinder boxes right now. Oh, wait, that's oil. Something I'm allowed to read. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there'll be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. That one last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. Need to escape it as long as you can. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. So There's in this game, you you kill like an old man. I got oil. I guess the whole former self thing is what resonates with me right now. Descent into madness is a key theme in many gothic tales, as is sort of the theme of doubling and having a split personality or another self. It plays with the concept of identity um, and sort of the old tradition of the doppelganger, the other self, the double goer. So, or Jekyll and Hyde, you know, it's a splitting of the self based on qualities you don't reconcile with your own personality. I guess it can. It's like a cross between well, a cockroach and no, a no, 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 nope, no, 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 no. I think they want me to go down, but. That's why I'm not going down there. No, 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 no. That's not loot. Loot. Um, offer full attention to Alexander or something. May no man breaks the seal. Oh, I think I'm going crazy. Maybe I'll just flash my lens for a bit. Okay, I think I'm good now. Oh no. 
Oh no. Oh, oh no. Do you hear that? Somebody just like grunted. Oh. Maybe I'll like go stealth about this. I've been thinking about how this was such a huge hit when it came out. Um, and why it's considered to be so incredibly scary. And I think there's something interesting, like an interesting correlation between the fact that the I horror genre, starting with the early gothic, darker. has increasingly become about a narrative that has no arc so much as it has a descent into loss of control. Um, it's not a hero's journey, it's not a romance, it's not a comedy, it's not anything like that. It's a very steady, just downward slope of a character losing all control of his or her situation. And I think that amnesia captures that from a player perspective because obviously you can't fight, you have to hide, you have to run away, there's nothing you can do about it really. So maybe that's what makes it so successful, Look. is that it echoes that previously passive formula of watching the descent into helplessness. Statues. It's also interesting to me that I remember the storylets like these better than I remember the actual gameplay. A strange familiarity toward them. Which I was trapped. Crazy. I was trapped. I was trapped. A chair. Don't go crazy, Daniel. Stay with me. I love how players will end up speaking to Daniel, even though like you're in the persona of Daniel, you'll speak to him as this, if he's your buddy in this or something. This oh yes. That is fantastic. Go ahead. Maybe it's a willful disconnect just because Daniel is losing control of his situation and you don't want to be you losing control of your situation. Like the most times I hear someone call him Daniel is when something's wrong and it's like his perception going wrong. Loot? I don't think the humming oh, is as loud in this one. Take this key. Good. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh no! 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 No. No? Uh? No. No. Are you currently scared? I... I am not, like, having a pleasant, <laughs> nice experience, but I don't think I'm scared yet. Okay. Well, what was that five seconds ago? Were you scared? I thought, I thought there was going to be a thing coming after me, but, you know, this freaking game just jump scares me all the time. No, I, I am, of course, not scared. You know, like, <laughs> this game is, like, obviously so easy. I think I, they want me to go back out here. No, 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 no. Nobody's here. Check those corners. Check those corners. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Hello? Dan, Daniel? It's okay, everything is okay. Whoa, well, no, you're staying open. No, no. Nope, 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 there was a scary, scary music and the scary monsters. Go, Daniel. Daniel, go. Daniel, go. No. It's fun. Um, I think I already This is such a nice this. light room. I'll just stay in here. Look, Look at that painting. Yeah. Look at that old man. I think they might be details of paintings, oh, some of them. Yeah, it's possible. That would make sense. Although, I think they might also be altered because look at the architecture in the background of that one. It's moving. Well, it is You're moving, insane. but I mean, oh. aside from that, I mean, look how unnatural that is. You wouldn't have seen a real building like that, and the Renaissance was very much about establishing a naturalistic perspective. Hmm. So it would be interesting if part of the horror here is to alter old paintings in a way that makes them look surreal or unnatural, um, maybe in the sense that you're going insane. So these things that should be very sort of classical and well-known uh, develop this air of unfamiliarity. I think they did a really good job of invoking sort of the beauty and terror of the Gothic by making it fancy and pretty in its design, but adding such a, an element of decay, like looking at the dirty sort of grimy floor and the lighting and the humming in the background, just enough unpleasant details that the beauty becomes perverted into something really terrible. What is good and right and logical um, is made the most horrible of all because it's supposed to be good and right and beautiful and logical and you just add a tiny dash of something ugly and horrific like the castle grows some mold or the, the pretty lady has a weird birthmark um, to make it horrific in its perversion. Why Gotta is every screen. single room in this entire building a library? It's funny because I don't question it. I actually didn't question it the first time I ever saw it, and it's funny because I was wandering around wanting to read all the books, so you think I would have. I think more than anything else, 
to me, it just creates sort of this clutter of old cryptic objects that intensifies the atmosphere. But if it were anything to do with character or setting, I think it would have to do with the idea of this being and something that should be a place of uh, learned aristocracy that is perverted by something ugly happening within. Bagpipe monster? Nope, nope, definitely not. Everything is safe and okay. What you heard was- That sounded like a bagpipe monster to me. No, nah, no, no. You don't like me. Everything is safe uh, and happy. Nope, 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 nope. Most of the horror is from the atmosphere right now because nothing is actually threatening. So, for example, that one part when I was just walking and then they made a scary sound and they shake the things. So that just made me not want to go towards that area, but then I realized after a while that was the only direction I could go to. The scariest thing is the thing left up to the imagination. As long as you don't completely see something, but you just know something bad is there, there's this dread of whatever it could be, and your imagination is free to make up all of these terrible things that it might be. It's the unknown and the sense that there's something waiting to become known in the unknown. That relates very much to the theory of the uncanny, which is the idea that you have your sphere of what is known and what is comfortable because it is known. And the unknown in and of itself is not frightening because it's apart from you. But as soon as something from the unknown threatens to become known, it will disrupt your sense of reality, uh, which is a threat to your sanity, to your logic in the world. Um, and the thing itself is not frightening so much as it's threatening to become revealed. So there's this thing in the movie industry, I believe, that says show, don't tell. And that is all about using the power of the medium. And I feel like the power of the medium of the gaming medium is not text. In Journey, for example, when these other flying scarf fishes lead you to where you're supposed to go, instead of saying, here's the text and this is where you're supposed to go. So that's the difference between the two. I don't know if I can think of a better mechanic than conveying through paper, but I feel like whenever I see a piece of text in this game, I just feel the urge to skip it. Yeah, so at the beginning of Bioshock, there was a scene where instead of like giving you text about the power of the Big Daddy, they showed you a Big Daddy protecting a little sister, where like he skewers an enemy who is trying to attack the little sister. And so that's something is using the medium correctly. Ooh, that must hurt. But that didn't hurt. Oh, you're, are you I'm out? Just, yeah. I'm knocked out. Is that scripted or is that? Yes. Oh. Wait, what if lot. you don't ever pick that thing up? Oh, fuck you, Barrel. <coughs> you can't oh, beat the game then. Oh. It's Wait. one of the things that's required to get past. It's a key and lock mechanism. Of course. We are dealing with monsters. Yay. Yay! That's a Judas chair. What is that? Yay. A Judas chair is a medieval instrument of torture, um, which basically does look like a chair with a little triangle on top. And what you would do is you would have someone sit on top of the triangle and push them down onto it. Ow. Yep. Oh, please! I'll do anything! Whatever you want! Anything! I'll do anything! There's all sorts of fun medieval torture devices in this game, which is another thing I've always found, well, interesting about it. Some of them are kind of obscure. I'm not a fan of horror games. I wouldn't want to experience this. So that wasn't, that wasn't the most pleasant game I could have played. But at the same time, I didn't really get to the meat of the horror part, so I really can't comment on how I really feel about the game yet. The idea of a horror movie or some sort of horror entertainment is the idea that you go in and you witness frightening things happening to people, you witness people encountering danger and death, and then when you are able to walk away from the fiction and you yourself are alive, there is a reaction called catharsis. Uh, with a game, I can see that being even more exhilarating because you yourself are in sort of this first person position trying to navigate the horror landscape. When you walk away, there's an even greater feeling of, oh, I got out of that. What a high, I'm gonna live. I would really say this is a lot more closer to roller coasters than films. Because in roller coasters, you're actually experiencing those as you go, but in films, you're still looking through. Like, you're, there's like a layer of separation between you and the film. 
And so that thrill of roller coaster is just what I, d I really don't like that, and that's the same, basically for the same reason why I do not like horror games. I would equate Amnesia more to a movie because there's suspense about um, something scary in the sense of being maybe visually scary or scary in the sense of having to get away from something. Um, it just seems a little more conceptually frightening to me. The horror is like a layer of separation. It's not really you feeling the horror. In, it's not like real horror, I guess. You're not actually being killed. You're like, you're like feeling this horror by proxy through your character. But something like Journey, for example, you're feeling that connection to your, to like this other person, and that connection is real. Just since I already know what to expect going into it, I kind of, I try to find ways to subvert that and try to not let the game get me. And so that's, it's a completely different experience, which I also really enjoy playing, but it's not the one that the game wanted me to have. I forgot the studio's name. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I know, I know it's in there somewhere. They're called Frictional Games. Frictional Games, yes. Do you know anything else by Frictional Games? I know they're making a kind of, like a Geiger game right now, but that's about it. Didn't they do Penumbra? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did that too. Yeah. I would say they're trying to fill a hole in the industry, because at that time, say, games like Dead Space were also becoming more, um, more action-y, like Resident Evil 4, becoming very action-y, where the player starts to have more and more control over the situation, and it starts to become like the Banff instead of the wimpy one in the situation, and they're tr going back to the roots of what true horror really is, instead of like building on top of the existing game framework. Is Amnesia a torture device? <laughs> um... Hmm. I think it could be if you wanted. Um, that's really interesting. There's an interesting layer within the game about, you know, spoilers. Uh, the fact that, what's his name again? Alexander or something or another? Um, is running experiments in order to gauge the power generated by feelings like pain and fear um, with the premise that those are the most powerful emotions. And that'd kind of be the argument for amnesia, like on sort of a meta level, is the most powerful emotions you're going to experience are those sort of dread, suspense, fear, pain things. It almost feels like the device of a frame narrative in that, yeah, you have, as you yourself are experiencing um, this sort of back and forth between just the grueling dread and the jump scare fear, um, you're discovering all of these, you know, little stories about this this crazy person trying to extract actual powerful energy from pain and fear. So there's definitely meta commentary going on there. Yes, I would say that it's art. I would say that video games in general are a new art form. You know, someone's gonna say, oh, are you saying that Call of Duty is art? Well, if you consider film a genre of art, then, you know, is a Michael Bay film art? Video games, I think, work the same way in the sense that you have your Call of Duty, but then you have, in this case, your Amnesia, or, you know, in terms of other types of games, your Eve or your To the Moon or whatever. So many things, I think, could be considered art and work as something that evokes emotion or questions or some form of expression, um, that I think it's fair to put that broad of a definition on it. The definition of art is, like, very hand-wavy. So almost anything can be art if you try hard enough to, like, define it as such. So yes, Amnesia's art, but I feel like that's almost a meaningless statement. But it does have a lot of like qualities that I would say are like traditional to art, such as the ability to like invoke an emotion inside me, which is in this case the state of helplessness, which is something that probably only Amnesia can do, like Call of Duty or like maybe even a film can't really achieve that feeling in me. So in that sense, yes, Amnesia is art. Hello, critters! Thanks for watching. What did you think of this episode? If art is meant to elicit emotion, and amnesia definitely makes me feel something, to what degree does the emotional response make amnesia art? Feel free to share your thoughts and ask us questions in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about what we talked about in this episode, there are some helpful links down below. Share, like, and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. See you next time!